It's Thursday, and you know what that means. Mm-hmm. We've got Brody yep. Lee on the podcast. Well, yes. we normally don't start that way, but I felt like it would be weird if we didn't start the podcast with you that way. I mean, anyway. I just I just discontinued it, so probably a good time. What? To, yeah. Bullshit. Anyway, this is AEW Unrestricted. Hi, everyone. I'm Aubrey Edwards with my lovely co-host, Tony Schiavone. Lovely. <laughs> How you He's... doing, you bitch? <laughs> Wait, you who, talking to me? Who, who are you talking to? <laughs> Which one? I was, talk, I was talking to Aubrey because before we started rolling tape here, she was giving me a hard time. So I, I was, was giving just... you a hard time because you weren't getting your shit together. Like, we already started 15 minutes late, and I'm dealing with your bullshit. Yeah, Tony was late. All right. <laughs> Tony was late. <laughs> well, uh, hey, Brody, sorry you had to get involved in this, but it's good to see you, my friend. Hey, How you good doing? to see you, too. You know, I appreciate uh, that I could accommodate you guys. <laughs> thanks for joining us this week you're on welcome. Unrestricted. <laughs> you're welcome i had such a fun time last time while driving in a car trying yeah. to not trying to not die I actually decided to uh, be stationary for this one yes yeah, now you, yeah you told us before your eight-year-old son was sleeping with the tnt title how did he, <laughs> he take was. the fact that you don't have it anymore how did he take uh, that so as you know, in that match, I was quite injured, um, looked horrible. Bit. Yeah, it, it was probably not what an eight-year-old wants to see. And he cried, cried. But the only thing he mentioned was not my health, <laughs> not was not was dad okay. It was, you lost the title. Hmm. So he took it uh, very roughly, yeah. yeah. The kid uh, understands the importance of the belt. He then turns and said, well, now you need to take the tag team title because that's what you do now. You take titles. <laughs> and I you said, just, you're, just walk you're in and grab it and leave. I said, bro, you're a great booker. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the dog collar match because it was yes. insane Ooh. and it was bloody and extremely, extremely well done. Like you and Cody uh, have amazing chemistry. The storytelling was fantastic. Thank, Sorry thank you lost, but. I mean, yeah. ultimately, the match was super, super memorable. Uh, so how does something like that come together? Did Cody propose it? Did you propose it? Um, Give us a little bit of behind the in scenes. A, in a very, actually, roundabout cool story, um, one of my favorite matches of all time is Piper vs. Valentine 1983, the dog collar match, hey, which I've funny watched enough. tons of millions of times. So when discussion of what should the big match be that we do, I almost jokingly threw out, let's do a dog collar match. And everyone goes, yeah, that's a great idea. And I was like, oh, my God. So then the day of, they say, hey, uh, Valentine's coming, and he wants to talk to you. So, him, I, you know, it was unreal. He, you know, he, then after the match, he pulled us aside, put the match over, said how impressed he was, like how, how much he loved it. And, I, like, it was crazy. And then they had that great shot of him at the end right. of him just applauding. Uh, I haven't watched the match back. I've only seen clips because I don't want – I just want to leave it as it is feels very special to me. Uh, it also sucks the result. So I'm going to leave it where it is for a little while. I'll get, I'll get vodka drunk at some point and watch it back late at night. Uh, I like the yeah, specific I, vodka drunk. Uh, Tito's like, only. Tito's only. <laughs> but I, we just got off of a phone call about not, you know, the sponsorship. So I wanted to be careful, just say a very general vodka. There but if go. Tito's vodka wanted to sponsor me, I'd be very happy about that. Well, they are the they are the vodka for dog lovers, as you can hear in the background hey, already. I right? have I have the dog dish, <laughs> 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 and it says that. It, yeah, it, it was a tremendous match, but it, uh, Brody, it was also a dangerous match. You guys, yeah. and, and I know you know you you we we all kind of talked about it beforehand. The length of the chain and so many parameters, so yeah. many things can go wrong, and something like that. I mean, that was a dangerous thing to get into. Yeah, a couple weird things. Uh, we were presented a couple different chains and options, and we went with what you saw on TV, mainly because it looked good on TV. Um, that was not beneficial to my neck to have that right. strapped around me and then carrying it around for 20 minutes while another man is trying to kill me. Define uh, like how a chain <laughs> looks good on TV versus not. Uh, bigger and makes better sound, makes which, sense. In, okay. which in turn hurts more. Yeah, no. Totally. So uh, I did this for the fans. I just want them to know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I, um, I talked to a few people a few days after the match. Um, I ride Peloton a lot. And the day, yes! I think Thursday, I don't know if it was Thursday or Friday, I quit a ride for the first time. Um, I was about 20 minutes in. And I said, I can't do this. And my body wow. was just not proper. 
Um, I think I'm slowly getting just two weeks out now and I'm slowly getting normal again, worked out. But like, I, th- I think I left a piece of me in there. So oh, damn, but yeah, but I'm happy with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so AEW has been a really great opportunity to let you shine on the microphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about having the creative freedom. Uh, it's, it's unreal. Um, it's nerve wracking. Um, I think I mentioned it before the anxiety and stuff like that of now there's no, uh, there's nobody to blame. There's nobody to say, Hey, you, um, you weren't good because someone wrote this for you. It's now, Hey, you wrote this, you performed it and it sucked or it was amazing, either, you know, either way, but like you now have to be prepared to deal with that kind of stuff, you know, and I am, I'm ready for it. That's what I've always wanted. Uh, I talked about the dog collar match. These are the moments and the kinds of things that I yearned for, for years. I wanted to be a professional wrestler. I wanted to be a successful professional wrestler. And I wanted to get into these gritty and grimy feuds that have these crazy matches that mean something. And I was never given that opportunity at the other place. And I've already been given that up to you several times here. Let's talk about the development of the, of, uh, the exalted one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is, uh, this was a storyline we had heard about a lot co- going forward in, in AW in its first year. And, and then all of a sudden it's Mr. Brody Lee, who's the exalted one. When did you find mm-hmm. out that was going to be your, your character coming into AEW? Um, it had been mentioned to me as kind of a, an option, but not a clear direction um, mm-hmm. until a few weeks before. And then they were kind of deciding to debut me and Matt on the same day in Rochester. Um, so it, it kind of all fell together at the same time and was a pretty crazy opportunity to have to be in my hometown um, to re-debut and to like almost be born again. Um, Womp as for the character, I was a little unsure of it just because I have never done anything like that. So being a background dancer for so long, you you get bits and pieces from people and you try to put the best foot forward that you can as a leader now. Um, so I try to do that on stage and backstage also. Uh, and then I was termed a leader by somebody in the office a few weeks ago and I was appalled that they would ever had said that about me. Uh, but I think, I think at this point now, maybe that's where I'm getting to. So what was the decision to uh, sort of wear the suits in <laughs> There was a lot of the earlier promos had had a very mm-hmm. very Vince vibe, obviously, yes. um, uh, and the suits have still become sort of the namestay. Like Brody Lee is a very well dressed man. Yes. Um, once I wore that first suit, it felt good, um, but it didn't feel completely right. Um, the Vince McMahon um, comparisons flew. That, that's all people talked about the first three to four weeks of my eight right. career, and that became, yeah. I think, detrimental to me. And I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't want it. Um, so I tried to get away from the stuff that they were saying. So as opposed to a, a multicolored suit, I now went with a full suit tailored to me that I don't think looks anything like a Vince McMahon or anybody else. And once I did that red one, I was like, I'm sold. I, this is my bi-monthly, you know, routine now is to go get a suit made. And, and it's, I love it. I love it. Um, so, yeah, I think it was very important to, get as far away as I could from Luke Harper. Um, and this was probably the way to do it also, but it was so stark. And so the contrast was so much, I know I can't think of the word right now, but like, so it's just so different that I think sure. people were thrown off by it for a long time. And it took, and, and I think I was thrown off for, by it for a while too, and didn't really find my footing for a month or two in. You are Mr. Brody Lee and you're a badass on dynamite. Sure am. Now let now let's go to Mr. Brody Lee on being the elite. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I that, mean, that, that, that's an entertaining thing because I've been involved in some of your stuff. So are you saying uh, that? Are really, you saying that my dynamite character is not entertaining? Is that what I'm too no, entertaining in a different way? Uh, yes. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank okay. Okay. you very much, Aubrey. You're not a bitch anymore. Thank no, you for bailing I, me out I'm of that. Here, no, I'm, I'm bailing you out, Tony. Okay. No, you're intense, different. You're you're entertaining in different podcast. ways. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, after the first few bits of BT hit and were successful, I, I, I may have been heard to tell my friends that I was the, uh, best, most well-rounded professional wrestler in the world at this oh. current time. And I feel that <laughs> in ring in a serious promo comedy and just all around, 
I'm the best in the world right now. Hmm. I mean, and I think BT and Dynamite prove it. Yeah, it's hard to be argued, man. I mean, exactly. I, yeah, you are well well rounded. Yeah. A, a roll of papers has never been more terrifying or hilarious <laughs> than exactly. it has been in recent months. Hey, you got to yeah. keep people in line and, you know, different people have different tactics and, uh, you know, mine just happens to be very effective. So, so is, is there a certain <laughs> moment that like everything like clicked for you as far as like maybe the Brody Lee on Dynamite versus the Brody yeah. Lee on BTE? That's a great question. I think honestly, uh, the promo I cut on Cody challenging him for the match um, the week after. Oh, the yelling the one in the... Uh, yes, where we did it stage? in the hallway at Silver and Reynolds there. I think I went in and, and literally didn't... I had some thoughts in my head, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go in. And it was Jess, of course, and she goes, well, what do you have in mind? I said, I don't I don't know. But I just want to... This is kind of how I want to present it, and whatever comes out, comes out. And I think we did it twice, and she's like, are you happy? I was like, yeah. She's like, I was like, are you happy? She goes, yeah, because I trust Jess very much. And... Uh, when the, it was shot and shown, I was like, man, that was so powerful because it was stuff that I believed in. It was things that were real to me. And I had people tell me like, man, we could feel you, what you're saying. Like you, you are so into it. And I was like, yeah, cause it's real. And so that was kind of the term. I was like, oh my God, I need to start understanding not to script out everything word for word. Cause I'll get lost. Um, but have these ideas in my head that I want to say, and then just go out and scream them and just intensity and passion and, it does, sometimes it doesn't matter what you say, but how you say it and learning that was very important to me. And then just the opportunity and the reps of getting it over and over and over. Like I crave TV time now where there was a time I was terrified of it where it was like, Oh, you have a 20 minute match. And then I knew, Oh, no problem. I'm good in the ring. But if they were like, Hey, you have a 10 minute promo. It's like, Oh shit. What do I do now? It's like, I want that 10 minute promo. I, I crave it. So yeah, it, it, it hit and it feels good. I don't know the exact moment, but I feel like that promo with Cody and then the, the BT leading up to that was kind of the turning point to where we are now. Yeah. You do know, and I know you 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 know all the old school stuff, but that was the way guys got over. And that was doing promos mm -hmm. and using the, using themselves, being yep. themselves. Or that, not, not being scripted. Dusty yep. Rhodes, Ric Flair, Jim Cornette, Roddy Piper, yep. you know, those guys, they just went out and talked. Yep. And that was the way, I mean, that's that's really old school stuff. And that was kind really. of the thing that I was never given the opportunity to do the last eight years. And, and right. to my fault, I didn't master it. So I, I kind of threw some time away too, because I, I had I had resources that I didn't use possibly. So when now it's like a second chance and it's like, there's no way I can give this one back. And it's like, okay, now it's time to step up or get the fuck out. We're talking with Brody Lee on AEW Unrestricted. Huge, huge impact you've had so far on Dynamite. We're going to talk a little bit more about your background. One thing I'd like to talk about is State Farm Insurance. And I say I like to talk about that because I've been a State Farm customer, a member, if you will, since 1981, since the year that I was married. State Farm has surprisingly great rates on both auto and homeowners. Tony, you've been a member of State Farm since before I was born. There you go. That means that they must have like great customer service. They've got yes, they agents do. available everywhere. Like to be a member of a company for that long, you have to be really, really happy with their policies. I'm happy with their policies. And now I'm happier, Aubrey, with their easy to use technology. Because back then, you'd have to have the insurance card in your wallet. It was a paper insurance card or like a cardboard insurance card. Now you have it on your phone. You have, they have a great app and you have your insurance card right on your smartphone. So the technology that is advanced in the world has also advanced insurance in insurance thanks to our people at State Farm. So you can manage your coverage, pay your bill, file a claim all just from your phone. Some That's you already right. carry around with you. Who That's needs right. cardboard cards anymore? Jeez. No boy. A, a great price <laughs> with even greater service. So, Aubrey, as I always say, when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You say that all the time, Tony. I do. We're talking with uh, Brody Lee, who is uh, an instrumental part of the success of AEW right now. Exalted one, leader of the Dark Order. All around good guy and well-rounded, as we found out from talking to him in the first segment. Uh, not only from on being only, the elite, but 
I don't know who's judging that other than me, but I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm it's hey, I'm, we, it's on the board and I'm counting it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wanted I want to talk to uh, about your background, and okay. we need to. And, but, but before I do, I want to I want to go back to just one thing, touch on mm-hmm. that you said earlier. It really had to be, and I, I think we touched on this when when you and I talked uh, when we talked on our one hundred or the one year anniversary show. Mm-hmm. It had to be really disappointing that you were unable to make your debut in Rochester, New York. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it shook me. Uh, it was heartbreaking, honestly. Um, yeah. Every time I'd been to Rochester with WWE, it had been a literally a wonderful experience, whether it was I was in a dark match or whether I was in the main event, because I had done it all in Rochester. And house yeah. shows, I'd been in the main, I'd been in the dark match before TV there. Um, but no matter what, the people were happy. They were there. The advance to this AEW show was great which gave me just huge confidence because there, there was rumors, but nothing had been said. And, but people in Rochester knew that it was the time that I, my contract was free and that it was serendipitous. And yeah, that day that it didn't happen where I think you talked about before where Trump had his address about COVID um, Tom yeah. Hanks ha- said he had COVID and Rudy right. Gobert did the thing and the NBA canceled their season the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was, that was a week before, literally a week before you guys were in Salt Lake. Yep. Um, right. And I went to bed thinking, okay, you know, because we've never been through anything like this. So who knew? So I went to bed thinking, ah, this feels okay. You know, everyone, they'll get it in control and everything will be fine. And then once the NBA season went down and the NHL started, and then it was just like, oh my God, this is, this is legit, a legitimate concern for everybody in the world. And right. yeah, it, it sucked. <laughs> then I, then, yeah. then I knew it wasn't happening. And that's where Tony said, look, we can do this at Daly's place in Jacksonville. We're going to run here. Um, he goes, if you don't want to, I completely understand. But I had been off TV, I think, for eight months and or maybe even a year at that point. I'm not even sure. But for a while, off and on. And I was just ready to be a professional wrestler like I talked about. And I didn't care what the situation was. Of course, after those first couple of appearances, I was like, man, this is very different. Because I, I watched the product. I watched AEW and, you know, the crowds and – what a just what a dream that would have been in Rochester. Sure. Oh, right. Man. Sure. Yeah. Well, Someday. <laughs> yeah, you'll get your chance. You'll get yeah. your because we were we were going to have a, a gigantic yep. crowd that night. That, that was going to be a big yeah. night for us. That anyway. was that night in New Jersey. The yep. Blood and Guts cage Blood was guts. the next week. Yes. Yep. So it was going to be a pretty awesome start. Uh, instead, I did it in front of zero at Daly's place. Yep. Yeah, right. There were like two, maybe. <laughs> our guys. Yeah, maybe 13. <laughs> 13 yeah 13 so, yeah yeah and though, oh, i great. think now though like i've gotten so accustomed to it now um it might feel weird when people are back in the stands it might be too, there might be too much energy <laughs> happening because <laughs> we'll all I get, i'm fired up now <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. i'm bludgeoning men you know for a uh, bad pun uh <laughs> <laughs> cuz as vince vince literally named us that because when we asked why did you name us that he said bludgeon it's an action you can feel it and i literally just <laughs> use it as an action you know so, okay he's right apparently it works <laughs> maybe i yeah. was the one who was wrong <laughs> yeah the verb it's yeah. a verb okay let, let's let's go back and talk about your start you were a backyard wrestler along with your brother mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. also talk a, about the- uh, there's a there's a young man named chris harrington that you may or may not know that also yeah, participated in the backyard with me Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Hold up, hold Wait up. Wait a minute. That wimp took some bumps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not well and not many. <laughs> Man, I got some stories when I see him next time. This is okay. going to open up. This is probably going to really, this is going to open up many videos and pictures of old me to be put into the wilderness. So uh, this may have been a mistake by me. But yes, that's where we started. <laughs> this uh, is not a mistake. This is not a mistake at all. <laughs> Um, yeah, we did that. And then I think Chris's group with his group of friends actually had gotten a ring and they invited me down to just be, you know, we were putting our own thing together. And from there, we kind of, we still weren't trained, but we then had a spot where we could run shows and we ran our own shows. Um, it was like a karate dojo. The guy was very cool about everything. We had like maybe 150 seats in there. We used to fill it up. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. So then when we kind of figured that out from there, we started to actually train and then from there, I mean, I, I like to tell you I'm very poorly trained. And if you watch me wrestle closely, uh, 
you can tell I'm poorly trained. My footwork's horrible. There's a lot of things that are just terrible that I do. Um, but literally in the middle of training, we just kind of went on the road and figured it out from there. And that was probably yeah. 2003. <laughs> okay. Oh what was your, uh, what was your first gimmick? Uh, Huber boy two, which is my real last name. Um, and we were going to have a big group of Huber boys and it only ended up being me because my brother <laughs> turned out to be a referee and a mm-hmm. chemist and, uh, never wrestled. So, uh, <laughs> I was Huber boy two. I had number twos all over me and yeah, there was no number one. He was a referee. Yeah. Did, did you wrestle under a mask as Huber boy two? Uh, probably at some point. Okay, you, you did wrestle under their mask, though, right? Uh, not regular. Okay, all right. I don't know where you're getting your information from, Tony. I don't know if I can trust okay. you anymore. That's from, that's from Aubrey. Got it from her. <laughs> Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Tony. <laughs> you were, you were also okay. Let's see if this one's correct Uh-oh. that we got from Aubrey. Uh, you were into tape trading too, right? Huge, huge. Oh, yeah. totally <laughs> mine. Totally mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How did? How did that start? How did I, that start I, for you? So it's funny now. We I just moved down to uh, Tampa, Florida, and in the move, we have these two giant bins of just VHS tapes. Yeah. And my wife's like, well, what do you want to do with them? And she she could care less one way or the other. We have the space to put them in storage or whatever. And I, I contemplated throwing them away, and I could not bring myself to do it. Right. Just two giant bins of these tapes that I'll never watch that I have – available everywhere else to me now but i just can't i just can't do it um i don't know how it started somewhere around the point of ring of honor starting i think in 2000 maybe 2001 um it kind of that's how the that promotion was built on tape trading and we kind of would get the hour of video catalogs and i was a big ecw fan so then when these fan cams were available to me i said oh well let's try to watch the show this way and then from there i would buy like a Best of the Independence, 2000. And Chris Daniels would be tearing it up, you know, oh, like yeah. in three different gimmicks, you know. And it was like, it was just, I was hooked, hooked. And then from there, it was just like, you pick, you get these best ofs and then you just pick the guys that you want. And you'd buy every Ring of Honor show. And then I was doing Ring Crew for Ring of Honor early with Dun & Marcos. Um, I'd travel up with them and the Carnage crew and do Ring Crew for a lot of these real early shows. And like, I think that taught me how the business, like, not the glamorous part of the business, but the real shitty part of the business was, and I was okay with it, which is a key aspect of success in pro wrestling. Right. You kind of have right. to know how to deal with yes. the shit. We're told, Let's... I think Dr. Tom said, um, do you like the taste of shit? And you know, he goes, he goes, well, you probably should because you're going to eat a lot of it. Yep. And like, that was his advice in getting into the business. That's actually which is true. pretty good. Yes, it's true. Yeah. But it, I mean... I could never, there's zero regrets. It was the best time of my life. Oh, yeah. The the amount of friends you make on, right. like, really shitty situations being <laughs> yes. on the indies, you're like, exactly. these are the best times yep. of my life. Exactly. These are so great. Speaking of indies, you were uh, Brody Lee on the indies before I, you got signed, correct? I was, I was. Yeah. 2000, 2007, we were in a diner, and um, I, I think it was Lit from uh, Special K sitting across from me, and he's like, we were trying to think of a new name for me because I think Hero Boy 2 wasn't very marketable as you. No. I don't know. I disagree, but. <laughs> um, and he said, boy, you look like, um, I can't think of his name now. Uh, Brody Bruce in Mallrats. Uh, Jason Lee. God. Yes, Jason Lee. And he's like, you look, you look just because I had n- kind of very trimmed down. And if I shave now, I look like Jason Lee. And uh, he said, you should be, you know, Brody Bruce's name in Mallrats. So he's like, you should be Brody, and then use his last name, Lee. And I was like, huh, that's great. And Kevin Dunn from the Ring Crew Express will tell you that he was the one that had that conversation with me, but I believe it was Lit from Special K, so who gave me my name. But yeah, uh, so I think that was 2007, and then that's where I ended up in Chikara. Um, I was just on a road trip with some with the Olsen twins, um, and Reckless Youth no-showed. It was a Sunday show, I think, in Hellertown. Reckless Youth no-showed a show. Was, and uh, Mike Quackenbush looked over and he goes, hey, did you bring your gear? And I said, yes, I did. Yes, and because you know <laughs> that what you're was doing. how my, my super indie career kind of began. And that's where it started to like progress um, kind of then around the world and then Ring of Honor in 2009. Your first name, Brody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you're just your, I don't know, the, the way you the look in the ring, I guess, mm-hmm. reminds us of Bruiser Brody. I mean, do you, you, you realize that, don't oh, yeah. you? Oh, yeah. I'm 
I mean, love him. I mean, that's one of the huge sure. tape was I had so many of him, you know, all over the world. Uh, him and Terry Funk, right. him and Abdul, just so these crazy matches that I was in love with, and right. I finally got to do one <laughs> two weeks ago. Sure. Do you ever had a chance to meet Terry Funk? I have. I've just very briefly at an indie show. Uh, he was getting taken out to go back to the hotel and just very briefly got to say hi to him, but literally probably my favorite professional wrestler of all time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go through, uh, let's go through your uh, debuts or your, uh, the list of your, uh, some of your highlights. 20, uh, 2002 Rock City Wrestling debut. Yep. I believe that was two, I believe that was 2001. And I only I only remember this because my father passed away in 2001. I debuted oh. a month after he passed away, and he never oh. got to see me. So it was a little heartbreaking, but mm. I don't yeah. want to be sad. It's okay. Uh, but that's yeah. how I remember it was 2001. Because Alex uh, came up to me last week, and he said, hey, you debuted on this day in 2003. And I said, I'm pretty sure I debuted in 2001. And then some research, he goes, yeah, you did. So yeah, Wait, um, Alex that Marvez was, got a stat wrong. Yes, he did. And I what? So you heard it here first, folks. Guys. I'm so sorry for stooging you off, Alex. He's uh, a fraud. <laughs> um, so the Rock City Wrestling was the one that we kind of put together by ourselves, and it was like okay. a, um, a, a, almost a boxing ring. <laughs> so I probably mounted up some early injuries there. Oof, um, but problem. yeah, that yeah. We, we did. We would run monthly. Um, yeah, and. Chris Harrington was also a member of that group. Mm. Man. Well, I've got a lot of have, a lot of fodder for him, well, I can tell you that. We're gonna have to have Chris Harrington on the podcast. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work out for me. No. It's like, why is suddenly Brody not getting booked on dynamite anymore? Who's he he have heat with? I don't understand. <laughs> Does he have that much power? Fuck. He's no. like runs AEW. I He's know, like one of the I know. Essential guys. I know. That's bad for AEW, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2010, you went to Dragon Gate in Japan. Yep. So you that's a funny. With, uh, yeah, fun story. Go, go. Uh, I was just going to say, so I'm in WXW um, wrestling Bad Bones, and all the Dragon Gate guys had come over for a tour to WXW. And Bad Bones was like, oh, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to do fucking everything. I want to do a Rana. I want to do all this crazy shit. He goes, why? I go, because this is what these people like, and I'm very big, and I think they'll like it. So we did it, and literally that night, uh, Shima came up to me and he goes, "Hey, uh, do you want to come to Japan?" And I was like, "Yes." And then so went home, like we had the contact, um, and went to Dragon Gate. And Shima was couldn't have been a sweeter person, human being to me, like just a wonderful person. Um, that's where I met Ben Pack. Um, that's where I met Trevor Ricochet. We all stayed together. Rich Swan. They were all so Rich Swan, Ricochet, and Pack were all on the same tours as me. And it's just insane to think of those three, the amount of talent just in the room that I was in. So absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's where I learned to almost keep up and not have a plotting um, methodical style almost, um, which I had to relearn when I came back, but like, that's almost, and that's today's style. So I think I'm kind of, that's where I learned, started to learn it. Okay. So uh, you were signed uh, with uh, WWE and sent to developmental in 2012. Mm-hmm. What was that experience like? So, uh, about six months earlier, I had been in contact with somebody there and um, was getting ready to go down for one of their tryouts. I uh, broke my leg, tar- uh, dislocated my patella, uh, oh. lost my sh- lost my shoe job, and then a week later, my wife told me that she was pregnant, um, unplanned. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and it was mine, so it was okay. That was going to be my next there question, but I didn't know if it was rude to ask. <laughs> Uh, so then, um, the world was ending, you know, I don't, but then six months after that, they called me again and said, Hey, are you healthy? And I said, actually, yeah, just literally just got cleared. He said, Hey, can you come down January 1st? So my son's now scheduled to be born early January Uh and I, yep. And so I'm traveling to, uh, Tampa from Rochester to do this week long trial. So my wife said, you know, no problem. Go ahead. Um, so the baby did not come out. Uh, the week happened, and then January 17th, we're in the hospital having the baby, and John, that's when Johnny Ace called me. Um, the phone breaks up, um, so I think, of course, I've ruined my entire opportunity at pro wrestling stardom. Uh, I don't have his number because it cut off, so I call Claudio, and I'm like, oh, my God, do you have Johnny Ace's number? And he goes, yeah, here it is. Text it to me. I call him. 
I said, Johnny, I'm so sorry. I missed your phone call. He goes, Oh no, no problem. He goes, Hey, do you want to, do you want to work here? And I said, yeah. And yeah, got hired the day my son was born. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Great story. So it's pretty cool. Tremendous story. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, how the Wyatt family idea was presented to you. Um, I don't know if either of you have met Bray Wyatt, but he is a very intense human being. You don't and say. before, <laughs> before I was even hired, um, Claudio calls me and we never called each other. So I pick it up and he, he, I say, Hey man, he goes, Hey, you know, we hear you, you might get, I is just almost maybe getting signed at this point. Nothing had been signed. He goes, Hey, but somebody wants to talk to you. And he gets on the phone and it's a man I've never met, never spoken to nothing. And he, for the next 10 minutes rattles off these ideas of what the Wyatt family became. And then he goes, all right, man, I'll see you later. And then Claudio gets back on. And he goes, yeah, Bray, just, he really wanted to talk to you. He knew you were coming here. He just really wanted to talk to you. And I go, well, what happens now if I don't get signed? Is he going to be really, really upset? <laughs> so, but literally everything he said was exactly what he wanted to present it that way. And I had just happened to fit in perfectly at the time. And I didn't change a thing from when I was on the Indies at that point. So is there anything that you had, uh, you had hoped the character would be that maybe? Uh, I thought it was a really great step into that world. Um, I always hoped that it would progress from there and become an actual character. Um, we used to get asked all the time, like, well, what is, what is your character? And then I would point out how somebody else on the roster's character had been fleshed out through a series of feuds or storylines or things that they did on air, not just like, Hey, here's this character. He delivers cookies or whatever, like some stupid shit. That's a gimmick. So I always was of the, I thought hoped that it would flesh out, somewhere from behind Bray to the forefront and just never happened. All right. So now the Bludgeon Brothers become a reality. You and Eric Rowan together. The crowd reaction was huge, positive yep. for you guys when you first started. So what, what do you think happened? Yep. So literally every time that an idea for Mia Rowan would uh, come to fruition, it would instantly, and a singles idea, it would instantly be right. – taken to a certain level and then be like, you know what? I think we're just going to put them back together as a tag team. And we did it three times and we were always happy to do it. Um, the Bludgeon Brothers looking back was a very cool run. Um, uh -huh. I think it's underrated because we never really had the big matches except for with the New Day and the Usos one time. So we never had those big right. matches that people could sink their teeth into. But sure. as an eight-month eight, eight month run, it felt – it was awesome. Um and I don't know where it was going to go. Rowan got hurt, tore his bicep at the end, and it just kind of disintegrated everything. And, yeah, <laughs> I was sent home eventually. Okay. Well, bludgeon is a verb. <laughs> it's an action. <laughs> it's, it's an action. It's an action, action word. That's exactly feel it. Right. Feel you can it. feel it. Feel it. Okay. Said, sure, we do man. have a shit ton of fan questions <laughs> from oh, Mr. Boy. Brody Lee. That we're going to get to here on AEW Unrestricted. Mr. Brody Lee, the exalted one of the Dark Order, is with us here on AEW Unrestricted. We have a few fan questions, but before we get oh into boy. that... I thought it was a shit ton. A few. A shit it ton. Is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's on the spectrum between okay. a few and a shit Fair. ton. So Fair. between good save, good save. two good save. <laughs> and a million. Well played. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your DMs on Twitter have always been open. Wide open. Uh, so before we get into the questions, has there any been like, what's the funniest, craziest thing oh, you've gotten? Oh man, I don't know. I've had a couple, I don't know. Surprisingly, I don't get anything too crazy because I don't um, respond too much to the opening crazy. So if the opening's crazy, I'll kind of let that one settle. Um, I do, I, I say thank you a lot and, and stuff like that. Um, but I never really engage too much. Um, I've had some hockey conversations on there, cool stuff like that. Uh, but honestly, nothing, which I opened them up for the crazy, and it's it's been a little disappointing. And they're still open. I have 650 unread ones in there that I I scroll through a few each day. <laughs> wow. I also have had, I have a lot of people send me the same stuff every single day. That oh, I I've heard of that. Yeah. And it's, I, I don't know how, I mean, so I put up the same thing every day, so I get how you can be mental like that, baby. <laughs> So, right. Yeah. I can't really fault Tuesday, them for that one. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday. I can't really fault them. For that. I'm just copying your gimmick, man. It clearly right, works. Right. But yeah, that's, I mean, it's a bad answer, but I, nothing to, I, I'm almost just, dis, like I said, I'm disappointed. So I'm sure when this comes out <laughs> You're gonna and get I all say this, dicks. yeah, I'm going to get all the weird shit. All the dicks. I have zero, all zero, zero. So You've far. got zero dick pics. Zero. John Silver tells me he gets. <laughs> 
Of and course, zero. zero would get dick pics. I, oh, zero. Lord, we didn't need to hear that one. Okay. <laughs> Johnny, you know, now, of course, he does. No. <laughs> Uh, and we're done. Okay. <laughs> this is AEW unrestricted, everybody. <laughs> no, I, was gonna say, I was told there's no no lines here. <laughs> no, no that's right. Whew. So you mentioned, Brody, you mentioned you're a big well, hockey so, fan. Well, I one mean, more thing. I was tiptoeing okay. on that answer. And then you made it very easy. Thank you. <laughs> so, so go ahead. I don't know where to go next. Because I, I wanted to say, to I wanted to say, yeah, zero dicks, but... I didn't know if I could get pull that off. No, it's yeah. zero dicks. I mean, we literally mm-hmm. just got done recording with Anna J, and we're like, "Oh yeah, we're talking about dick oh, pics," and now it like shows up as a filter, and like yeah, you have to I, tap it to actually see it. I feel like me and Anna J have vastly different DM <laughs> material. <laughs> I you would probably be right. <laughs> I would bet <laughs> money that you definitely do. <laughs> Okay, have we settled down? No. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. So, Brody, yes. you're a big hockey fan. I'm a humongous hockey fan. Um, right. Uh, I'll segue for you. Me and my son just kind of went to the Tampa celebration in the arena. Um, it, was a much, oh. it was a smaller one. It wasn't the big – the one at the football stadium. Yeah. It was the one in the Amelie. Um, but we were like 20 feet from the cup. Uh, mm. Stamkos, the owner, and a couple other people spoke. And it was just a real cool thing to share with my son to be just to sit. Sure. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and you, uh, you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan? I That's am. Die hard. Yeah. Um, it's mm-hmm. been a very tough existence, tough go. Um, mm-hmm. 1993, they went on a run to the conference finals, and I fell in love with the team. And I've been, okay. been a fan ever since. And Doug Gilmore was like my hero growing up. I still, the number 93 is still synonymous with everything I do. It's in my email. Um, oh, yeah. very cool. <laughs> that so, makes sense. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so they kind of – the Maple Leafs are very special to me, but literally the heartbreak year after year is mind-numbing at this point. <laughs> That's how you know but someone's I, I, a well, true fan when yeah. you, like, cheer for a shitty t- team after yes. decades and you're still in it. <laughs> and the thing about them is they're supposed to be good now. They have, like, some of the best players in the world, the young. Um, and I sat through the, the 10 to 12, 15 years of just misery. So now it's supposed to be the payoff. And I'm not fucking getting it, so. Nope. (laughs) All right, speaking of payoff, let's finally get to some fan questions. Oh, shit. I get paid a lot. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got Chris561 on Twitter. Uh, Are we ever going to get a dog in the Dark Order? Are you going to take Pharaoh from Cody? Uh, Yeah, the count of Pharaoh. I have two dogs, five cats, two feral children. Uh (laughs) There's no telling who's going to come into the Dark Order. Um, the whole I, barnyard behind us yeah. with their little paws up. If I brought my dogs, it might not be as exciting. They're very lazy. Um, so I don't know. But they're good dogs. But, I, I mean, if I had my way, yes, I'd have a dog tomorrow. Four of them. <laughs> <laughs> like a chair. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah, I just don't want to have to handle them at TV. <laughs> okay, I want to be like I want to be like those rich people who have kids but don't take care of them. So I want to have all these dogs, but I don't want I don't want to take care of my TV, but they can come home with me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bad analogy? No, Boy, perfect. no, I had a, I had a line there, but I'm gonna stay away from it, man. I'm gonna stay away from it. I had a real uppercut <laughs> to somebody, but I wasn't gonna do it. Okay. Uh, uh, Benjamin Porter, who is at Tingle is my hero on Twitter. Please ask Brody what this, do you know what this day means? I assume <laughs> he knows, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, that's the funny part about all of this. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's caught on, right? Now yeah, we know what it means. It's became, it's honestly become a bit of a self-reflection daily, um, and honestly, I stopped doing it after the, the dog collar match, and it feels odd to wake up and not do it. So, really? uh, but it's also freeing in a way. So I don't know which way I'm going to go with it in the next few days. So when, like, when did that actually start? Like, what was the impetus for that? Honestly, it become a countdown till um, my contract is over. Um, <laughs> I was on I was on tour, and I can't remember that. I think I don't remember what country. Um, I was going to say Chile, but I don't think it was. Uh, somewhere on tour. And I literally had to, in my calendar, you or you can go on Google and type in how many days until, and I would do that like every five days. 
to see how many days I had left in my contract. And I would tell people like little things like that, just to keep myself like it's coming. I know it's coming. And then they extended it. And so then I moved back and stuff like that. And so then it just became that to remind myself like, Hey, this is going to, this isn't going to be forever. There's going to be another opportunity somewhere, whether it's here or not. And this is where you can pay this tweet off. And so, yeah, it just became, yeah. and then, like I said, it became a self-reflection thing daily of like, okay, who knows what it means? <laughs> like I said, not me. Uh, and here's the other problem. I've given people that ask me in interviews all the time and I've always given different answers. So people will bring it back up to me and I don't remember the answers I give. So I, the truth is I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's how the, most of the greatest things in wrestling work. Like, right. I don't know. Right. I just, right. Someone yeah. just wanted worked. to do. Right. All right. <laughs> the electrode on Twitter asks, do dark order members pick their own numbers or are they assigned once they're joined? They're a hundred percent assigned. Um, Anna J was the only one that I had a hand in. She's 99 because uh, Wayne Gretzky wore 99. He was the great one. Mm -hmm. So it was my nod to hockey. Uh, <laughs> How about that? Yeah. How about that? And I was very proud of that. Nobody gets it. Nobody cares except me. <laughs> that, that's all um, it's about, man. It's about yeah, and then, I thought it was. I, I thought it was from Get Smart. That, so that's Tony's thing. He thinks that or he want, is the same play. That's where he gets it from. And I was like, no, no, it's right. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Okay. Um, and Tony, as you may know, is a bit of a numbers guy. He has a hand in naming some of the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's a lot of a numbers yeah, guy. So no, <laughs> no one's, no one gets to choose. Not in my group. Okay. Not in my phone. No man, it's because you're the exalted <laughs> right. one. And also, a few, of them, yeah. a few of them had numbers before I got there, so I had no, no, no say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nick X Nothing on Twitter wants to know if you could choose. To add one wrestler from the past to the Dark Ooh. Order, who would it be Terry, and why? Terry Funk. Terry Funk. I, but I think the problem will be that he would eventually either kill me and I would not be the leader of the Dark Order anymore. Or, yeah, I don't know if it'd be beneficial to me as the leader to bring him in, but that would be the one, A number one. Uh, number two would probably be a Fit Finley, a uh, guy like mm. that. Just, uh, just watching him, I've learned so much from him personally. And just, yeah. I was a huge fan of his, you know, another guy who I tape traded for, I have multiple Fit Finley tapes. And which is weird when you work with them for so many years to, you know, it's just surreal still to me. Yeah. Such a, a, a mellow talking guy in the backstage area, but a, a real badass. Real legit. badass. Like if I'm yeah. going to get in a fist fight and they say anybody, yeah. anybody in the world, I say, okay, well, where's Fit? Yeah, Absolutely. We got a question from B Money Daddy on Twitter. Oh God! I love. I, I think my favorite part of these fan Q and is just reading the names. I was just gonna say, Nick Toxic seventy four, <laughs> XX Stoner XX sixty nine. <laughs> no dick uh, seventy four. Dick seventy four. Sorry, ninety three. Ninety three. Big to Aubrey seventy five. All right, Big Money Daddy, what coaches have offered you advice or strategy over the years? And if oh one my God. Uh, so could be many. an advisor to the Dark Order. Yeah, uh, I think the one that I want is spoken for, uh, Mr. Art Anderson. Um, literally like a father figure to me in my WWE run. Um, I remember some of my first times in just at TV, not knowing what to do with myself at ringside, just awkward and he would come over and just talk to me and then once I think he realized that I could handle myself and and I'm a great worker that's he then leaned into me even more and I was told sometimes that he would put me over in these meetings and he'll tell you this he would put me over in these meetings and he said it might have not been beneficial to me because he was so animate about it but he saw he said he saw something that was special and he's just such a sweet genuine human being um, I'll always get an oddly timed text from double just saying the sweetest things like, you know, checking on my, my wife and kids and checking on me. He's just a yeah. wonderful man. Yeah. He's a good man. Yeah. I'm, I yeah, did, really is. I did beat the shit out of him twice. And, uh, my True. wife threatened to, my wife threatened to divorce me. Mm -hmm. She said, if you put your hands on double again, it's over. Well, <laughs> make it a third time for me. Uh, top rope squishy on Twitter says, how hard is this? <laughs> Sorry. Top rope squishy. <laughs> Top rope squishy. By the way, that's Maddie Anderson. All right. Thank you, Maddie, for this. Okay. They actually uh, give, so Maddie you, wants to they give their real names after Top Rope I mean, come on, man. Sometimes on, they man. Do. We give it. We <laughs> expose them. Okay. All right. 
unrestricted. Uh, this, uh, this is a question we've asked of Anna Jay before. Uh, how hard is it to maintain your composure and not burst out laughing yeah. when filming being the elite? And are you yelling at John Silver and Anna Jay is attacking Stu Grayson? Uh, man, it is incredibly hard. If you've seen Silver do one of these things live, the shit mm-hmm. that comes out of his mouth is outrageous. And just <laughs> things that I would have never even thought about. He slapped tens titties around a week, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and was looking for milk. And I turned around at, at this point and I said, "What? I, what the fuck have I become?" I, <laughs> You're I an enabler. I considered. I said, "You know what? Maybe we shouldn't air this one." And then I said, "You know what? <laughs> yes, we should." <laughs> I think he. I think that's like where the Johnny Hungy T-shirt came yeah. from. So now you're uh, making the boy yeah. money. Who knew? Who knew? I didn't know that he was going to like. So, uh, but to be fair, I think we've only done a multiple take. I want to say twice. Ooh. So usually those are straight run throughs, and you. I mean, yeah. people crack throughout the bit. Usually when I'm cracking, I step back behind Brandon while he's filming, and so they can't see me laughing. Uh, but even if you see Anna Jay up in the corner, she's laughing. Reynolds is laughing. Mm-hmm. Uno has his mask, so he's okay. Stu. That motherfucker can keep it together, and he's he, – he, I don't know how. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, the prestigious Johnny boy, Juanito Beans on Twitter. <laughs> wait, wait. Juanito Beans. Wait, what? <laughs> That's Juanito underscore Beans. Yes, okay. correction. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so when you went to AEW, who was the one that you marked out for more uh, when you appeared at your debut? Was there choices? I don't know. Oh. No, just asking. Well, it's an open-ended to... question. Who I marked out for? Yeah. Tony Schiavone. Or did anyone mark out for you? Like, either way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a true legend in the business, Tony Schiavone. Tony, do, I, I, I'll i just take this minute to answer this question this way because I don't have a good answer for that one. Uh, do you ever sit back and just think about how much stuff you've seen and witnessed in professional wrestling? Do you ever, like, like and this is a legitimately honest question because I was watching you – I, I can't remember what year it was doing an in-ring interview. And I was like, my, just the amount of history you've witnessed. Yeah. Have you ever, the, does it ever dawn on you or like, how do you? <laughs> no, because you, Brody, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff has just kind of gone in one, one ear and out the other. Uh, but I, I can tell you this, I do sit back sometimes and think about all the stuff I missed. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. And, and I, and I regret that. I regret not following it Yeah, because I, 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 after you started working with us, I didn't oh, realize I you were part of the, I didn't realize, you know, your history. So you're saying so after, I went back and saw, after 2000 after, or, or yeah, after okay. o, 01. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's I regret. Were you, but, were, you but just no, so, were you sour to the business at that point? Or? No, I wasn't sour to the business. I just tried to do something else. I got that's you. All. I got you. I, 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 but, but anyway, I just, uh, but what well, that makes the, yeah, even, I appreciate you. I, it makes it even better you that you that. came back now in AEW and like this huge, yeah. like that makes it even cooler to me. Yeah. I, I think it's all cool, but I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, no, and, it just, uh, it's mind blowing. We've had a good, we've had a good time. I mean, we have, yeah. uh, I've had a great time working with you, even though I do need to say this, <laughs> uh, when, when, <laughs> when, uh, when you won the belt mm-hmm. and I think I came in the ring to interview yep. you, yep, absolutely. you did grab me. You were pretty stiff when you grabbed me. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, son? That's some bitch strong. What did I, I do? Slightly <laughs> gassed up and like just a little yeah. worked up at that yeah, point. You just want to You were pretty worked tone. up. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, Giving the guy you, a hard time. You, you gave me some wonderful advice that night. Yep. And I'll never yep. forget it. So, what was the advice? Okay, good. I'm not going to tell you because you don't deserve to know. Why don't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, I have a horrible habit of – and this is new to me because doing promos again, like I talked about, this is new to me. And right. doing one where a, a, an interviewer comes in the ring in a very intense situation where I'm going to be ranting and raving, I, I, it's all new to me. So what I was doing is I was going to find the microphone. So if the microphone was down here, I'd lean in and find it as opposed to letting Tony bring it up to me. And mm-hmm. it's just it was such a little thing. And honestly, AEW's production team saved me. Because if you look back, they come so tight on me when right. I'm talking. You can't even tell that I'm bending over. And it, it's masterful. Right. And it's – so when people talk about, like, yeah, we're these great professional wrestlers, man, these production are making us this otherworldly superheroes. And th- just a little tiny thing like that 
people would never even think about. And I wouldn't even have thought right. about it. But after sure. you mentioned it to me, I went back and watched it, and I was like, my God, they saved me. And it's just yeah. so well done. Yeah, what I mentioned to him, Aubrey, and, and I've done this to a lot of guys. Cody's <laughs> another one. I says, stand up straight. You're big. Yep. You're strong. Let my let me bring the microphone yep. up to you. Don't hunch over. Mm-hmm. And, and another the, the, yep, yeah. like you said, like if especially in a promo like that where I'm supposed to be this domineering, you know, powerful, right. you know, badass all of a sudden, when I'm standing up tall, it's going to look so much more appealing, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I, I get it. And it's I just it, yeah. it wasn't thinking about it. Damn. Right. Yeah. The first interview that we ever did live on on Dynamite was me and Cody. And I remember telling Cody that day, I said, stand up straight and do the interview. Mm-hmm. And he didn't. Yeah. And I just he grabbed him up. by the elbow I love and, it. and squeezed the elbow. And he knew <laughs> to stand up straight. I love it. So, well, I'll yeah. never forget it. I'll never I'll never Good. find a microphone again. Find me. There you go. Because that's I'll a whole other thing. Time that's another Next thing. Next time I'm going to hold her way down. Yeah, low yeah I'm going to be like, come on, Tony, stop ribbing me. <laughs> uh, but that's a whole other thing is, it, it is, this is such another little minute detail, but like if, if you're a star, you let these people come to you and sure. talk to you. You don't go, you don't need to find them. I don't need to, you know, so that's just a little kayfabe minute detail that I, that you made me think about. Right. It's fascinating. Yeah. I, All right. I never deal with any of this shit because I just stand in the back and try not to get hit. So. <laughs> Cool. You do a lot of other crazies. You deal with all the crazy people. I have to deal with one a night. You have to deal with all of them. I don't have I'm sure not all of them. <laughs> Most of them. Most of them. Most of them. I, I had to deal with Billy Gunn. I'm tired of his bullshit. <laughs> wow. Who, who isn't? Okay. I know. All right. So, so we- <laughs> uh, is it my turn to ask one? Yes. I, I guess I am. Uh, Wolf Finis- Finster. Wolf Finster, Wolf Finster on Twitter. Finster. Wolf Finster. Not that I mind the beard. And I know why you've got one, okay. but I'm curious as to when we will see your hmm. face again. My God. Uh, <laughs> My that's, God. It's that's a, great, <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, my mm-hmm. kids wouldn't recognize me. Um, mm-hmm. My wife likes it at this point. I don't there know. You go. Uh, that was the, the main hurdle to begin with, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I like it. I got it trimmed way down for my debut, and it was, mm-hmm. it was strange even then. Uh, so I don't, I, th- I don't know. Someday, someday. It's a nice segue when into when the next I'm, question. When I'm booking dynamite in 2030, maybe I won't have a beard. You're not ripping this okay. out of Tony Khan's hands. <laughs> oh, he, he, he can still have final say. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of beard, segue into the next question. Uh, Drastic Fantastic on Twitter. Uh, do you have any facial hair uh, products that you would recommend? Zero. Zero. I use none. And I feel like they're not necessary because, I mean, maybe mine's not groomed to the best of its ability. Um, But I also feel that a beard shouldn't be completely neatly trimmed and groomed. It should look like this. And this is this is, you know, a definition of my personality as well or some shit. I don't know. Yep. No, it is. I get it. But like even for another weird character thing, I'm this well-dressed corporate boss but when the bell rings i still have this thing and these wild eyes and just little things like that where to separate the characters got it great answer (laughs) and the right answer too by the way (laughs) thank you i've had so many i've had so many things sent to me you know beard care never never (laughs) yeah well there you go Hey, Brody, thanks, man. Hey, thank you, guys. This is a blast. This is awesome. It, it, thanks. It's it's great having you with us, honestly. It was, it's just I love it. so excited that I found out you were coming in, uh, and I think it's great. You've, you've been a big part of what we're doing. I love so. it, man. It's been refreshing to me. I, we talked about on the other podcast, Ben. This has been life saved my life, you know, as my career, I guess. Yeah. You know, save my career. So sure, this is wonderful. I got yeah, it. your positivity is is. <laughs> I mean, it knows no bounds. It's just like seeing how much like happiness you exude backstage. It's it's wonderful. Yep. I love. Don't it. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> no, wouldn't dare. <laughs> sure, she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> wouldn't dare expose the gimmick. She, she is. She's baffled. She's baffled that people like me. <laughs> I think. I think it's because I have just suck such sick charisma, and you know, <laughs> magnetability. Like it's just. I don't know. You know, she doesn't yep. get it. But I said, you must get it because you married me. So Yeah, exactly. There, there you go. There you go, lady. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. you tell her, Tony. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> well, thank you, Brody. Uh, thank you for those listening, much. 
You can follow Brody Lee on Twitter, this Brody Lee. Subscribe to AEW Unrestricted Podcast for free wherever you get your podcast. New episodes every Thursday morning, and you can check out video versions of the podcast on YouTube. Just search for Ooh. AEW Unrestricted. Beautiful. And tune into AEW Dynamite Wednesdays, 8 o'clock, 7 central on TNT. My name is Tony Schiavone. I'm Aubrey Edwards. I'm Brody Lee. Yeah. Thanks for listening to Unrestricted. Woohoo!